I'm joined now by the controller of BBC One, Peter Fincham. Why did the BBC deceive the British public? Well, the BBC didn't intend to deceive... Uh, the BBC hasn't deceived the public, but the, uh, the, the, the clip that was shown yesterday was shown to the press, so it wasn't shown to the public. I think it's the first thing to establish. This it's was appeared on BBC... Sorry to interrupt, but it has appeared in BBC channels, and every person who reads a British newspaper who probably watches the BBC has been deceived. Sure, but what, what, what yesterday was was an exercise for the press. It wasn't a programme that was broadcast. But to come back to your question, why did the BBC... Uh, commit a deception. We didn't intend to commit a deception at all. What happened was that, as is fairly normal in these circumstances, we were supplied with footage, we were supplied with what we call assemblies of footage by the company making this program for the BBC. We took those assemblies in good faith and we included them within a package that didn't just cover this series, it covered a whole other series of, 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 of programs that we were previewing for, for the autumn season on BBC One. Uh, when we had done this, and we did it, as I say, in good faith, I obviously hadn't got the, the, the slightest idea that there was anything misrepresentative about what was shown there. Uh, quite soon afterwards, the palace got in touch yesterday. We were then in touch with the palace. They explained this wasn't what happened. We quite quickly established it wasn't. As soon as we knew that, uh, we collaborated with them. We put out an apology. We absolutely do apologise for this because clearly this has caused embarrassment to the palace that we didn't wish to do. But we did not set out to deceive Right. either the journalists there or the public at all. But it was incompetent. Well, a mistake was made, without a shadow of a doubt. Human, well, human error is, is incompetent, if you like. So, of course, a mistake was made, and that's exactly why we're happy, that's why I'm here now to apologise and to take responsibility for it, because I'm the controller of the channel. So. What checks did you make about the assembly of the order? Because, I mean, you publish the material. You are the person who puts it into the public domain, and you were quoted as saying, and we just heard there uh, from the journalist in the programme, that the Queen loses it a bit and walks out in a huff. You didn't well, know that. The impression that is made from the way that this material uh, is edited together, that there's, there's clearly tension in the air, this, uh, this photo shoot, and the impression that's taken away, if you see it edited together the way that it is, is in fact a false impression. That's what we have since established. That's why we've looked into it over the last 24 hours as, as you can well imagine. Um, uh, in the course of uh, a present -like presentation like this to journalists, we might show uh, uh, short extracts from 12, 15 different programmes. But not about the Queen. I mean, you must accept, surely, there can be nothing more damaging to the reputation of the BBC than to show the head of state in a position which she clearly wasn't in, which was factually incorrect. That is very damaging to the reputation of the BBC. Uh, I accept absolutely that that is uh, an embarrassment to the BBC, and of course it's an unfortunate incident that we wish had never occurred. What I'm trying to do is explain how it came about, and it came about in something that in many ways is quite routine, where footage is supplied to you from different programmes that you put into a promotional tape. Uh, that footage you would expect, and we would normally expect to be an absolutely fair reflection of what's gone on, if it's, if it's, if, if it's footage of factual but, in fact, the, the sequence of events in reality was interesting enough without it being sexed up. I couldn't agree more. I've since had an opportunity to review what we call the rushes, the, the original footage of that, and, and it's an extremely interesting scene that plays rather differently. But it's not been edited. There is no programme. It's not been finished, the programme. Uh, the programme is in the process of being edited. The programme comes out in the autumn, so in relation to when the programme's broadcast in the autumn, we're still relatively early in the process. When the programme comes out, believe me, a fair representation of what's in the programme will take Take place. But, but you, what, if you took it on trust in this promo, the assembly that was given to you, you, you would presumably take it on trust with the, with the programme itself, wouldn't you? Well, clearly the assembly was played to a group of journalists. That is a separate issue. That is not quite the same. It's as publication. Broad, it's publication. I'm not denying it. It's not quite the same as broadcasting uh, a programme to the nation. So there would be right. checks. There oh, will be absolutely. checks. Oh, good Lord, yes. We have you know, full editorial guidelines and checks, and I'd expect those to be followed but, through. But this is seen as part of a pattern of behaviour, is it not? It comes in the same week as the BBC has been fined £50,000 from Ofcom for deceiving viewers in Blue Peter on well, BBC One. I, I think superficially they may look similar. They're not really very similar issues at all. Of course, the timing is unfortunate for the BBC. No denying that at all. But if you look at the issues, they, they couldn't really be more different. What, what Blue Peter was about was about something that happened on air to an audience, to a children's audience. Uh, in fact, and the BBC has had what it's had to say about that and has said what, said what it said. This was not. This was in a private meeting with journalists and, uh, uh, you know, There's in no London. such thing as a private meeting with journalists. Fair, fair point. Yeah, this right. was in a, a meeting with journalists, but nevertheless, this was not in any sense broadcast. This wasn't broadcast. Right. 
discussed at all. Um, so I don't think that the issues are quite the same. But, 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 you, but you, you can read one into me, but the other. You were spinning a story for the journalists to get some headlines out of it, which you did, not the ones that you thought you were going to get. I mean, you were, you were absolutely publishing this. I was doing, if you like, what, what every controller of every channel does, which is presenting material to journalists, uh, previews of our, of our autumn season. That's not in itself uh, such a remarkable thing to do, and I don't think it in itself is such a bad thing to do either. Uh, in this particular circumstance, for very unfortunate reasons, a mistake was made down the line. I take responsibility for that because you, I did it, and of course, therefore, we've apologised uh, to the palace. Do you think you should resign? Well, I don't think I should resign, to be absolutely honest, and nobody suggested to me that I, I should resign. I mean, I explain it again. It's a mistake that was made for which, of course, as the controller of the channel, I take responsibility. If somebody above me, if the director general of the BBC, Mark Thompson, comes to me and say, you must resign, I will, of course, resign. But I, I don't think so. I think that's disproportionate, and I hope this is something we can move on from. Is the BBC looking at whether there are any other examples of this? I think that in the last six months, and in a way I'm moving away from this to the more general issue, there's no question that the issue of, of trust between broadcasters, not just the BBC, of course, uh, but between broadcasters and its audience, has come into a spotlight in a way that it hasn't before. And there have been some particular reasons for that, very well publicised reasons for that. Ultimately, I think that's a good and healthy thing. I think it's a good thing for broadcasters uh, to look again at their working practices, to, to examine how they do things. Sometimes customs and practices develop over a period of time that when you, you shine them out, you know, shine a spotlight on them, you think maybe we should do that differently. So, so you are investigating other possible uh, uh, breaches of the trust with the British public. I, I'm not personally, but that's certainly going on within the BBC. You know, we're looking at how we do things, how we make television. We've talked, for instance, about putting on websites, uh, uh, a sort of but thing on the website that you can click onto that says how we made this programme. But, you know, the very nature of television is that there is artifice in television. Editing itself is artificial. So somewhere there's a balance to be struck there between That's true, putting but... programmes in front of the public that have all the creativity and skill that editing implies and also programmes that are honest, which we must of right, course do. Right, exactly. Because there's artifice in television, that's yeah. why it's absolutely imperative that the British public thinks that everything is done in good faith, that there is no deception. That's why this is so important. Do you which, that? which is why I'm very glad that this sequence was not broadcast. I think if this sequence had been broadcast, that would have been a very much well, worse thing. I'm glad it came to light when it did. It was wrong. It was a mistake, which is why we've apologised for it. Mr Fincham, thank you very much.